Cool. Awesome. Let's go. Ahead. Let's make it happen, dude. Episode 14 yeah. is something from everyone. We are here wow. with Zadak Brooks. Zadak, I know you're a musician, graphic design. We got a little bit of everything going on. Yeah. I like to joke that I like got to know you spending a futon with you for a week or yes. two. Yes. <laughs> oh, we then, did. We did cuddle, didn't we? We did. We did. It was a, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a fun. I've spent like three weeks on the road and one of them was on a futon with you. Yes, it was. I'm <laughs> so, sorry. I'm giant. <laughs> absolutely. Hey, it worked out and now we're here with a lot of new stuff, a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Yeah, man. Um, so I wanted to get right into the new Centralia. Am I saying that right? Centralia. Centralia. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Great place to start. So where does that name come from? I was curious. Uh, Silent Hill. Silent Hill. Love Silent Hill. Okay. Yeah, we're we're all huge gamers. Um, Silent Hill's my like favorite video game mm-hmm. franchise ever. Um, and it was all like Silent Hill as a place was based on this town in Pennsylvania, Centralia. Okay. Okay. And it's like um, the the story is like people like would mine underneath it, and then like it lit up in flames, and like the flames never went out. Cool. Okay. So that's like kind of like the whole thing. Gotcha. Um, but there's like five other bands with the name Centralia. Okay. Get away from me, <laughs> all of you. Um, but they all spell it with an I because that's okay. how it's that's how it's spelled. Gotcha. Okay. So we put a little Y in there. Yeah. Uh, shout out Brad from Roseblood for helping me with that because I would have never had that idea. Figuring out and how to probably would have yeah been in like court or something and you stole my name. Yeah. I don't want put an X in there somehow. <laughs> yeah. Just find some other idea. CT yeah. in the name. Yep. Uh, so is the music then related to Silent Hill as well or is that um just the name? There's from. like samples and yeah. stuff from Silent Hill that I like, um, but nothing too crazy. Yeah. Like lyric content and shit like that. Like it's not. I can swear on here, right? Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> um, stuff like that. It's not. It's not. Yeah. Like related to Silent Hill in any way. I'm glad you mentioned the samples. That was the first thing. You were kind enough to share the album with me. And mm-hmm. again, I just asked you, but is an album, LP, EP? What's the correct? LP. LPs. It's a full length. Okay. It's a lot of songs. It is. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's and, cool. and a lot of them, there are the samples. And I loved you were mm-hmm. kind of chatting before this about the weirdness of the album. Oh, it's it, weird as fuck. Uh, that is, to me, the most exciting part. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like we've all heard so many albums at this point that if there's not something weird yeah. there, then it's not going to keep me. And For sure. Uh, yeah, all the samples. I think some of them were kind of like VHS samples from mm-hmm. way back in the day. Is that accurate? Yeah, what are those absolutely. from? Absolutely. Um, I grew up being a kid that was like, I need to film everything. Okay. I and even up till now, like when like tour was a thing, I would always be the one like taking videos of like a cool little sunset mm-hmm. or like somebody falling over because I thought it was funny. Mm-hmm. Like I I love like capturing moments. Interesting. Okay. Um, and growing up kind of just like with the camera you catch things that you look back on like mm-hmm. later in life and you're like wow that sucks <laughs> yeah you know so a lot of a lot of home videos um that kind of reminded me of good or bad times sure you know and kind of was compiled into a bunch of stuff so that's cool i yeah. uh, i actually have a bunch of home videos upstairs that i've been meaning mm-hmm. to get through and convert from vhs to dvd yeah. i'm excited to go through and see all it, the memories it, and like dude it's dope i can imagine seeing that how old were you at like five six years old um yeah just, just about it must be weird to connect with that version of yourself and especially now on the yeah. other side i imagine that's you and your rock star dream phase and you're <laughs> inspiring and now you're yeah. doing the damn thing you get to running, connect with that running around with a there's one in particular. I'm like running around with an acoustic guitar, mm-hmm. playing um, "The Only" by uh, Static X. Yeah, and I have no idea what the words are, so I'm like mush mouthing them, like <laughs> running course. around like with a giant guitar. <laughs> it was, yeah, there's a lot of them. Hell yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have any plans to use the like footage side of the VHS? I know the audio made it into um, the LP, but so I was thinking about it, but it seems a little too like personal. Yeah. to put out in like a video format. Yeah, feels kind of weird. Um, but we did for a lot of like the Centralia stuff and like promotion wise, we took a lot of videos and kind of had like that VHS vibe to it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's kind of, that's kind of like the, not like the marketing scheme, but like the way that the, the look and feel Mm -hmm. of the band and the record is like film photos and like old videos and old sounds, you know. There's something interesting there. I've heard people describe iPhones as like when I film Justin Bieber on an iPhone, mm-hmm. someone can see that at home and relate to that much more than if it's filmed on my DSLR. Right. And with iPhones, and it's interesting, I think v- vintage stuff, VHS stuff, hits the same thing of like we've just held a VHS camera and seen so many home mm-hmm. videos that like as we see that, we're much more able to connect and put ourselves in the room with the thing. Absolutely. And there's a, yeah. yeah, a layer of personalness that is. There, there's really always like a homey effect to mm-hmm. it where it's like comforting yeah yeah you just feel like you're in it yeah whereas iphone videos like you know they're they're iphone videos mm-hmm. 
even though what there was a whole movie that was filmed on an iPhone. Yeah, it's and a it was new incredible. Thing. I yeah. forget what it was. I'm also forgetting. But I've seen a uh, music videos done the same way. Yeah. There's a director I like named Cole Bennett who does a lot of mm. rap videos and stuff. Mm. Uh, and he filmed iPhone videos. And when I I think they were like little Yachty videos. I'm forgetting, but they were like big really? name, like yeah, Holy big shit. name videos. Uh, and it was one of those. I assumed that Apple had just given him a billion dollars on the table. Yeah. On the table. And he came out and said that, no, that wasn't the case. It was just him being like, I want to prove to people that you can yeah. do anything with this thing. Yeah. Uh, and it was like, damn, that's a really bold, creative move. But yeah, yeah absolutely. as noble as it gets. Wait, Incoherent. Mm-hmm. I think that was the movie. Okay. I could be a liar, but I think the movie Incoherent was all shot I on I don't know. I'll trust you. <laughs> I got to look on like Letterbox or something. I know yeah. I reviewed it and just yeah. said like, what the fuck? Yep. Because it was just, like, that's amazing. That's wild. Yeah. It's funny. I joke that someday we'll have a producer here to help us out, but I think it's more fun That'd not cool. to have the producer. Yeah. To just, just figure it out. It's like, I mean, we're wrong about what yeah. movie it's from, Dude, but like, who cares? Yeah. Everything about this is so cool. <laughs> I appreciate it. I know it. like... None of you could see it, but yeah. it's, it's fucking cool in here, man. <laughs> they can see the parts I want them to see, and the rest yeah, of it, I'm yeah, yeah. okay. Not the light point, bulb. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Yeah. yeah. So this light bulb, I come down this morning, I'm turning on some lights, and I, it's like dark in here, and over there, it's like switches, and I can kind of like push each one. I was expecting some light behind me, and no light's coming on, and I look, and this whole shit's just on the ground, just glass <laughs> and wires everywhere. So I just stuck it Very back fun. up, and I was joking with Zadak that I hope it falls while we're chatting here. It better. Yeah, it's the best thing I'm happen. manifesting it right Yeah, now. from a content perspective. Yeah. Like, I should have not glued it well so that it could fall. Like, no zip ties, no yeah. tape, no nothing. Yeah, I should have. Just... In hindsight, I should have done a bad job on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the VHS stuff, was that something you've been sitting on for a while and kind of hoping to use? Is it something you stumbled on in the last six months and um, like, or a year, I guess, whenever the album or out record came together? I think it came to me while we were making it. Okay. Um... It wasn't necessarily like something I've always thought about doing Mm -hmm. while the creative process was happening. It just felt right. Yeah. Um, Ebb and flow is so fun. Yeah, dude. Like, because this whole thing happened in such a weird, like, unorthodox way. So it kind of just things managed to figure themselves out as they went. Mm -hmm. And that was one of them. That was just like cool little interlude or something or something here or something here. What could we do? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, it all just – all the pieces started to fall together naturally. I love, I love it just as a, a texture and also a texture that's so authentically you and adds mm-hmm. like a, a personal element to yeah. it where I, I enjoy trying to use like newspaper articles as texture. So it's sure. interesting to me as a – when I need a noise texture in a video, it's like how yeah. do I make this and then what do I – I could just make it out of nothing, but it's cool mm-hmm. if it comes from something. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a similar, yeah, mentality there of just mm-hmm. adding in personal touches that even – yeah, we recognize some of them, but a lot of them are going to be to you and yeah. you're going to know the origin of it and how it's – portrayed in a way to yeah, a ton of people aren't gonna know shit yeah that rocks yeah to me yeah you know? it's cool and of course they're gonna draw their own conclusions and remember their own home videos and of it'll, course yeah hit their yeah. own memory for them yeah absolutely uh, you talked about the creative process i think you wrote mixed master like it seems like you did everything for yeah, this record essentially um it was me and our guitarist jay mm-hmm. that did kind of the majority of everything okay um and everybody like put in like a lot of help and like a lot of their side of it as well mm-hmm. but in the the writing process in terms of like music was Jay and I. And then yeah, I um I learned how to mix and master literally the day I was like, I wanna make a new project. Hell yeah. Um I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I still don't know what the fuck Perfect. I'm doing. That's a common um, theme, right? I love that. Yeah. yeah, dude. YouTube. Yep. Look up YouTube videos, yep. get Reaper, it's free. Yep. Uh you could buy cool plugins that do cool shit. And then you could have a record, you know? Yep. Um, so that was cool. What was that process like? I mean, do you, do you have, I'm assuming you're still in your home and your bedroom studio. Yeah. Like, what kind of process was that? Was... The basement, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jay, he lives or lived in Vegas at okay. the time. And um, he actually drove over here and moved out here wow. to like push incredible. the band. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, had you guys connected somewhere on the road previously or had you yeah. internet friends? Yeah, internet friends. Yeah. And um, it was cool because we kind of wrote it, almost all of it, over Discord. And uh, okay. um, yeah, just like sitting in Discord and be yeah. like, all right, let's toss ideas. Here's a riff. Here's a riff. Um, and then he recorded it because, all right, I'm, I'm telling you, I have no idea what I'm doing. And this <laughs> is proof. Um, I can't record guitar on time okay on my setup for some reason can you record bass on time or like no okay like well 
I don't know if it's something unique to those six yeah, strings. Yeah, it's or, weird. Okay. So like, I could like record vocals on time. Okay. At home, but for some reason, when I plug in a guitar and I go, Dun, it goes like I'm strumming. It goes, Dun. yeah, and it, I can't fix it. I've tried everything. I think my interface is like broken sure, or something. Yeah. So I feel you. Yeah. So he had to record instruments at his house, and then he sent them over to me mm-hmm. on discord and then yeah, i put okay. them into everything and then mixed and did everything and then i recorded vocals at home hell yeah discord's a wild one i uh i work with a production company that does uh college events so it's a lot mm-hmm. of like spring and fall shows for them yeah and one of them is at boston college and it's this huge dance show of 17 student teams of 20 people or whatever holy shit and during the pandemic they all learned their dances via discord and zoom That's and it was like how amazing. and talking to these girls was like how do you learn tap dances like intricate like over tap Discord. and ballet over Discord. Yeah. And it was just an incredible testament to how badly they wanted to make the thing. As you're telling the story, the same yeah, sense yeah. of like, yeah, you guys just wanted to make this happen. And Discord, I assume, was good enough but not perfect. But it was like, yeah. whatever, we're going to make it happen. Yeah. Uh, and I think, yeah, there's something beautiful in that. And then for him to mm-hmm. come across the country and see the rest of that process through is yeah. another bold step there. Yeah, that was the thing. It's like we got to like a very cool point. Um, but like – there's always like little kind of like mm-hmm. stops and like bumps where yeah. it's just like, all right, man, yeah, this is a lot, yeah. you know. Um, but once we like really saw it through, it like really, really started to make sense. Mm-hmm. And now he's here, which is crazy. I assume sitting in the room with each other also helps get through some of those. Oh, kinks for sure. Like- well, I mean, <laughs> we're really bad at like being productive mm-hmm. when everybody's in a room together. Bet, yeah. Oh, it's psychotic. Mm-hmm. So like, it'll take a couple hours to do like something that should take like 30 minutes yep. because we're just having a time. I, I'm so grateful that I work alone in my bedroom because I look at audio <laughs> and audio is always, yeah, the band is in the studio and it's mm. like, whether I'm in the producer seat or in the band, like it all would annoy me of just, yeah, there's so many yeah. cooks and so many ideas and like someone's chatting. It's like, I love all you guys, but like leave, I'm going to yeah. be in this little yeah. one by one oh, square. Shit. When I'm like, when I'm in go mode mm-hmm. and like, I need to get something done. If I yeah. feel a presence over my shoulder, <laughs> I will freak out. Yep. I, I, I yeah. need to just work. Yeah. But when it's like, people do it. yeah. yeah, man, when it's like recording, mm-hmm. it's like fun mm-hmm. because like someone will just grab the mic and be like, sure. <laughs> and you know, it's like, Hey man, <laughs> yeah. let me do that really quick though. And yeah. it just becomes like this huge, yeah. just fun time. But it could have been very productive, but it's not now, mm-hmm. which is fine. Um, but yeah, getting together and just like having the time, it's very cool. So is it a four or five piece? How many of those? Five are? piece. Five piece. And yep. you said one of them, yeah, is from Vegas. Are they all, yep. all Connecticut based? The rest of them? Um, guys, our guess... other guitarist is Jersey. Okay. Um, so me, Kalina, and Brandon are from Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Jay moved over from Vegas, and Vaughn lives in Jersey. And are you currently. guys, have you guys known each other for a while? Is this like oh, a. Yeah. Um, so Kalina is my girlfriend and I've known her since like late middle school. Mm-hmm. Um, Jay is Jay. Vaughn plays in a band called Rizel Got Her Wings and I've known him through like old tours mm-hmm. and just hanging out and Brandon would shoot at shows. Mm-hmm. He would take photography. Cool. Okay. Which you, you might know him if you Maybe, saw him. Yeah. Um, yeah. We call him TMP, uh, the Mosh photographer. Okay. Yeah, or Nightmare, Nightmare Brandon. Oh yeah. Because when it hits in midnight, it's it's his eyes go red. Okay. And it's just <laughs> jokes, silly jokes, and yeah. you can't have a real conversation with yeah. him. Yeah. So he's Nightmare Brandon. Hell yeah. Um, That's yeah. Funny. So delirious after the, the, maj- <laughs> yeah. the majority of us are Connecticut based. Hell yeah. Him. A little, yeah. a couple outliers. So it sounds like it's kind of like your personal dream team of sorts. Like you kind of yeah. handpicked people to be a part of this thing. And oh, now you guys, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, it, it all came together pretty naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, me and Kalina have always wanted to do something together for years. Like way back when I started Boundary, she was like, I'm going to be the merch girl. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that would rock. Yeah. And then it just never happened. Yeah. And, you know. Did she do her own music along the way? Or is this kind of like um, the first project for her? She she makes, like, house music and stuff. Okay. Um, but when it when it comes to, like, heavy music, she was just, like, a show guard. Mm-hmm. You know? So it was very cool to That's just, cool. like, be able to be like, you're doing this. She's mm-hmm. like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, no. I'm like, come on. Like, yeah. let's do it. You know? Yeah. Um, so, and then Vaughn, natural pick. Mm-hmm. Got to do it. Brandon. I, I knew Brandon vaguely for a while um i remember he was taking like like pictures at a show and somebody was like moshing on him 
and I like just like threw it to dude, mm-hmm. and he was just like, "Thank you," <laughs> and then it was just like an instant like yeah. click. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then Jay, like we started writing the project together. So that's cool. Just, yeah, that's cool to have like some new new blood and new energy in there. I think yeah, like, for you as someone who's seen the road, you've done some of the things. Mm-hmm. It's like it's yeah, it's h- easy to forget how cool some of it is sometimes. Yeah. For me, it's the same. Like Absolutely. it's nice to be on set sometimes where it's like. That's their first music video, and yeah. it, it adds some new challenges in, but there is a novelty there of like, oh, there's a an eagerness and an energy here that Absolutely. I can't find on other sets, and you kind of need very a, cool. a new and inexperienced person, and yeah, mm-hmm. for you, as you're writing the record, it must be cool to have that. It's uh, very refreshing. Inspiring you, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's refreshing to just be able to like, not necessarily like restart, mm-hmm. but it's just a whole new vision. Yeah. And, you know... With being in music for a long time, it's not like, you know, posting a Facebook status or like mm-hmm. posting a MySpace and hoping people see it. It's yeah. like now, you know, there's like starting at like 20 rather than starting at zero, mm-hmm. which is cool. Yeah. But I mean, it's just very refreshing to have new people involved yeah. and like having them get to see it from beginning yeah. to end. You know, uh, again, it's from very the neat. music video perspective, it's like, uh, I had a thought there. Um, I don't know. I had some thought there that was interesting, but it is now okay, <laughs> for my brain. It's over oh, there. Yeah. If you see it, if you I see, see it, it. Right around I you, see it. Know. It'll, it'll come back eventually. Um, but uh, cool. Big brain fart. Um, <laughs> we had the album coming. Oh, we're talking about how you got involved in yeah, so many different parts of the album. So you've now written it. You, you helped with a lot of the writing process. You've mm-hmm. talked about the recording process. How is it to be so, yeah, so much in the driver's seat of something? Oh, backing up. I remember my point is that you're talking about how it's <laughs> nice to have like new energy in the band. Yeah. And to me with a music video sense, it's the same of like, uh, I admire the diversity of stuff I get to do. And every month in a sense, I have a different theme as yeah. each band and project. And I look at bands oftentimes like, yeah, it must be tiring to do the same thing all the time. And not mm-hmm. that you don't love that thing, but just right. that we all love more things in one thing. Of course, yeah. And a, by nature of being in a band, you kind of have to stay true to a sound in some capacity and you sway left and right. Yeah. But, like there is a, yeah, you can't just... It's to hop seven lanes over yeah, and yeah. start something new. So that is mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think I think a lot of bands probably don't always get to feel, and it's cool to be able to yeah. uh, take advantage of that and really. I think see those yeah creative interests through. Yeah, that's probably my favorite part of doing this band is like, it's it's not necessarily like a fuck you to mm-hmm. like the norm, but it's it's very just what we want to do. Yep. So like, I remember. Our buddy um, Alex Casey, he runs Streets of Hate. He got in touch and he was like, yo, like, love the single. Can I check out the record? Sent it to him. And uh, he's like, what are your influences? I was just like, uh, glass jaw, kind of. <laughs> uh, and then it just, like, trails out to, like, Apex Twin. And it's, like, random bullshit. Yeah. And because that is, like, you know, what we enjoy mm-hmm. and, like, kind of what went into the record. Yeah. But – it also kind of doesn't sound like any of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like just to me, like just being able to do whatever. Some of it's going to be heavy. Some of it's going to make you cry. Mm -hmm. Some of it's going to make you feel weird as fuck. Yeah. You're going to be driving. You're going to hear it be like, skip it. Like, yeah, that's, that's what I want. You know, there's a great segue there of all the different diversity. album. You were talking about like the influences of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, As I was writing it down or whenever I hear a new album, my first thought is always like, Oh, it sounds like blank. Mm -hmm. And I feel like whenever I say that to a musician, it's almost offensive because it, (laughs) it, 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 yeah. If that band that I reference isn't something you love, then it's offensive or it's like, Oh, that's the mainstream version. I was trying to like, there's a, there, you can't go wrong there. Yeah. Uh, So I'll, or you can't go right there rather. I'll preface, I'll preface it with that. As I was listening, I heard elements of like the used and then good Charlotte, like the melodic parts and then there were some like heavy that I couldn't place, which I think speaks more to my yeah. ignorance of heavy music. And yeah, I'm just no. not as familiar with all of those bands. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I guess my question for you then is, what is good feedback as you put out an album? Like if I just said it sounds like the used, it's like, that is good. We like the yeah, used, yeah. but it's not really a, a pat on the back that makes you feel better, I think. I mean, I mean, shit, that's cool to me. If you think it sounds like the used and that rocks. Um, I love the used. Yeah, and some like the melodic parts I heard, yeah. Yeah. That was what came to my brain. Yeah. But yeah, so I guess what is good feedback to you or what is feedback that makes you proud of what you put out? Um, kind of anything. Mm-hmm. Um it, it's it's hard to like offend me. Yeah. You know? And like I think a lot of people will like try to talk shit on a record mm-hmm. or a song that you put out. 
but they say it in a way that's like silly and yeah. like almost like good. Um, I'll I'll give you an example because yeah. like I I don't care. You know that app Crate where you can like review music. Uh, I actually don't, but okay. So there's an app okay. where you can review music, yeah, but it's yeah. just like everyone in hardcore like talking shit just on low Twitter, but through. zero down into yeah, music yeah. reviews. Yeah, and it's like people being mean sometimes. And Always, like, yeah, <laughs> it's wait, a form. Which is, of course, what, it is. What, what, yeah. what are you gonna do, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember someone when we put out the single, somebody said, and if you're watching this, thanks. <laughs> um, they said, ah, oh, shit. They said that it sounds like a band that's like an up and coming band that's on a tour with the fall of Troy and protest the hero. And I think in their head, yeah. they're like, hey, what's to me? Yeah. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. That's exactly I what I want to be. I love to tour with those bands. Are, you, are you crazy? Yeah. So, you know, it's a good mentality. Yeah. I mean like nothing really offends me. Mm-hmm. I, I, I like feedback and you know, I went to school, uh, for art, mm-hmm. art school, uh, graphic design, so, you design something, and it looks cool in your head. Mm-hmm. You could put that on the wall, and three people next to you could be like, "That looks like shit." Yeah, and you kind of just gotta be like, "Well, why?" That's and then I could fix it. You know, critique is like a different language. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I'm bilingual because I could like oh, I yeah. I could un- I could take critique, I yeah. could understand critique, and I could give it. And I think that that's something that a lot of people can't mm-hmm. do and or take. It's a really cool statement. I wanted to get to the school part at some point, uh, mm-hmm. but on that on that note, obviously, yeah, art school teaches you how to make art, and I never thought that also teaches you how to take feedback on your art, which is a oh, impossible yeah. thing. And as you say, I can hear all my friends who've been in art school with horror <laughs> stories of yeah, it's I worked all night brutal, and man. they just said no, and it's like that's yeah, not even a, a feedback. It's fucked up, um, and that's really interesting that you're not only learning how to make art, but yeah, how to stand in the line of fire <laughs> and Yo, take you're that in feedback. It. And, you and it's the um, most anxiety inducing thing yeah. ever and of course when i'm when i'm sending a music video if i get bad feedback it's like no th- i still have a say here but when it's in class and you have a teacher it's like no you have to defer to what they oh, said yeah. because that's who's going to grade your thing like yeah. you just uh, disagree cool with that it. it's like stinks <laughs> yeah and like it's funny because i had a couple of professors that in, in certain classes mm-hmm. not not necessarily design but like some people do things differently than you yeah yeah um they're a way different generation than you. You are young. Mm-hmm. Sorry, they are old, mm-hmm. and they have different ways of doing things. Yeah, which could be sick, and you could kind of learn the ropes of like back in the day type shit. Mm-hmm. Or their stuff could absolutely suck, yeah. and now they're trying to kind of like control your design a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um. But I think going through school and kind of having like it, it makes you grow a bit of a backbone for sure. Yeah. And you could kind of be like, "Yo, I get it," but no. Like, this is why I did it. And they're like, oh, well, then go ahead. That's cool. You yeah. Know? But critique and getting critique is literally the scariest thing of all time, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. I've, uh, I, I hate talking about the podcast on the podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I have had the thought of like, yeah, I've learned to cope with bad feedback on music videos or photos. Like, I can separate myself from them. And mm-hmm. kind of like what you're saying, it's like, yeah, you can dislike the thing and that doesn't have anything to do with me. That is just, mm-hmm. you walked by and we're having a bad day and this thing accentuated your bad yeah, day. Yeah. Like, it has nothing to do with me. But this is a much more vulnerable and personal form of it. And I'm yeah, curious. Yeah. It's like, I wonder how that's going to go. Like, I'm, uh, yeah, I've gotten good. I There's a... One of the first playthroughs I ever did was for Construct Paradise back in the day. Okay. And we filmed Holy on like a shit. beach, on like a pier, and Construct we didn't have one of the Paradise. Wow. kings, right? Uh, I didn't have a, the guitar plugged in, because we're on a beach. Obviously, yeah. we don't have the guitar plugged in. The only comment the video got was that the guitar wasn't plugged in. <laughs> and as a, yeah, as a first video, I was so mad of like, how the fuck? Yeah. And then as I got, came to terms with it, it was like, no, if you watch the whole video and you complain the guitar wasn't plugged in, like, I did my job. Great. Mission accomplished. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so I Holy resonate shit. with you in the art school of like, yeah, if you're, whatever you're critiquing, like if you took the time to look at it yeah. and think about the thing, it's like, cool. Yeah, I did, did my job. job. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's a really oh, dude, interesting it's, layer to art school. It's really funny. Uh, for an old Boundaries music video, mm-hmm. we did like that White Room music video. Yeah, yeah. And we like made sure that the amps were in there and mm-hmm. all of us were plugged in and like... <laughs> whatever was plugged in trailed off into of nothing yep. as long as you can't see the other yeah, side yeah, yeah. it looks like it's plugged in you yep. know yeah because we knew like some little shit was gonna be like yep. you're not plugged in yeah 
They always do it. They always do always, it. Always, 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 always. <laughs> yeah. And what are you going to do? I don't know. I think you can't please everyone. And again, yeah. I still stand by that. Like, if there's so much that went into this, like, if mm-hmm. you heard the whole song and that didn't stand, like, at least you didn't hate that. Like, if this right. was, like at least you didn't go, wow, this was unwatchable. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you watched it enough to notice that the guitar wasn't plugged in, like, you liked it. Yeah. I don't care what you're saying. Yeah, like, you're watching you it, you're rocking it. with it, and you're trying to find something wrong with yeah, it. And that, yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. I don't. You watch it. I got a view now. Exactly. I don't think I can name anything I genuinely don't like. And it's not that I don't dis, it's not that I have nothing I dislike. It's that I just mm-hmm. haven't consumed it enough to actively yeah. talk about the thing I dislike. For sure. Uh, so it's some, I don't know. That makes sense. Um, with the, going back to the record, you talked about how you kind of grew up with a video camera in your hand and grew up with the visual side of stuff and then mm-hmm. you got into school and the graphic design. Yeah. When does it kind of, yeah, you're still visually interested, I guess, but when did mm-hmm. graphic design become the, the piece of that that was most interesting to you? Um, so growing up, yeah, I was always like behind the camera kind of doing that stuff. And there was a point when we, we would always have like Thanksgiving, Easter at my aunt's house and my aunt and my uncle are both like very graphic design driven. Okay, cool. They were in like the commercial industry and That's like, cool. doing cool stuff with like film and like directing, stuff like that. Um, and I remember... One of my longtime buddies, Nick Scoots, uh, Nick Garcia, he had this thing called Hats and Glasses. And it was just like this little brand that he made when we were in high school. And it was just like he would buy like blanks and there was just a little dude with glasses and that was it. And I was like, I know how to do graphic design. And I didn't know shit. And um, my aunt had... It's a common theme for you. Like, yeah. oh, I'm going to do this, then showing up. And yeah, it's like, and I was just oh, like, okay. oh, fuck, I don't know. A YouTube video. I'll yeah. figure it out, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, my aunt had, like, her laptop or whatever, and she was like, you want to try this? And it had GIMP on it. Okay. So it wasn't Photoshop, but it's, like, the like the web like browser version, Photoshop. I think, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, she gave me that, and it was like, go crazy. So I... Watched a bunch of YouTube, tried mm-hmm. to figure it out, and I uh, I took his logo. I remember it's so stupid. Mm-hmm. And I put, like, a, remember, like, when Galaxy oh, was, yeah. like, a cool thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I put Galaxy in the glasses. Oh, cool. And I was, like, new logo. Bingo. And he was, like, yeah, we'll post it. <laughs> or, like, we'll put it on a video or something. <laughs> yeah. And I was, like, yeah, like, yep. I did it. And yeah. he was, like, all right. Whatever. He probably thought it sucked. Yeah. But, you know, I did it, and it was cool. And, um... I remember I also I was I was a huge Twilight nerd, mm-hmm. huge Twilight nerd. Hell yeah! I love that shit. Hell yeah! And um, so I, I I took like a picture of myself, and I put like fangs in my mouth yep. and like made my eyes red. I like motion blurred the background so it looked oh, like yeah. I was in like the Paramore like Decode <laughs> music video, and uh, that was like I, I showed I showed my aunt and she was like, "All right, like this is kind of fucking weird." Yeah, but. You have a you have a grip on it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You and I tools. just yeah. yeah. And I just kept going. That's cool. You know. That's cool to have it in your family and have someone yeah. kind of co sign this creative endeavor. Was mm-hmm. music also in your family? Or yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Ever since I was a baby. Yeah. yeah. So you grew up with a guitar in your hand and yes. you talked about the VHS videos that it yeah, was there. Yeah. I uh I actually drums were my first instrument. Oh, okay, cool. And then from there it was just Do you still drum at all? Yeah. Okay. Um if I could get a drum kit in front of me, yeah. you know, so like at practice, it'll be really funny because we'll like be sitting there mm-hmm. kind of like if there's ever like a dull moment, mm-hmm. switch instruments, of course, and just fucking jam like an Avenged Sevenfold song <laughs> or something, you know? <laughs> Hell yeah. So when I get the chance, I do. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, did you, so then when it comes to the record, you're producing it, you have the guitar, bass, obviously drums. Are you then playing all the drums? Is are you the one who performed all the instruments on the record, or did everyone else come in and do that? Like, how did so the, that part that, of the production process come together? Oh, that part was fucking weird. So we, the whole Discord thing with Jay, mm-hmm. like kind of like recording everything, and then I sending it's kind of like it demos, over. and then you yeah. come together and you're in the full room for the mm-hmm. final like. So he like, it, it was funny. So he has like this weird little box thing, and like that's where he gets his tone, and love you. It wasn't a good tone. Okay. And and he like sent it over just like that. And it was like, here's the guitar. Yeah. And I was like, you're going to be so <laughs> mad at me, but you're going to have to re-record the entire record <laughs> and send it to me dry. And uh, so like with nothing on it. Yep. So then I could, you know, kind of mm-hmm. do that mm-hmm. for it. Um, 
Oh, well, he was he was not happy, but it, it it made for a good record, you know. That's interesting. But, as an art school student, you're not only good at giving criticism, but you're also happy to dish it out because oh, like, oh, this is part of the process. Like, it absolutely, that's interesting. Yeah, I for, mean, like I've seen people like literally like smash desks and like <laughs> scream in class and like yell at their peers yeah. and shit. It's like, bro, like, I would have beat around the bush in that, and you were like, no, just resend it. I would have been yeah. like, oh, is there any way? And you're like, just reset. <laughs> this, 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 I, I love you to death, but you gotta yeah. do it. You yeah. know. Um, but yeah, he recorded the instruments at his house mm -hmm. way, way back. Like this is, this has been a thing like in the making for like a year and a half now. Okay. Um, and so that he did. And then our buddy Ben, who plays drums in Roselle, flew in from Kentucky yeah. to record the drums with Mikhail mm -hmm. in Jersey. So that was like there was like this whole like because that was before we talked to Brandon about being in the band. Okay. So then I think Ben was gonna drum, mm -hmm. but then he was like, "I live in Kentucky," and we're like, <laughs> "Fuck, you live in Kentucky? That makes yeah. sense." Um, but That's long commute. That dude is a machine. Yeah. It is. It is absolutely unreal. He um, he does this thing where Mikhail always gets mad at him because he'll play, and he's like, "The dude's a robot." Like, he's so, so good. And he'll be, like, a millisecond off. Like, so, like, the entire track. So, literally, all you have to do is take it and go, mm -hmm. and it's perfectly in time. Yeah. Like, perfectly in time. All the fills are flawless. Mm -hmm. Dude is insane. I don't understand how he does it. Um, but, yeah, if you listen to the new Rizal Got Her Wings record, it's literally just, like, crazy riffs and, like, just the entire time. I um, which well, I did a video for uh, Vomit Forth, mm -hmm. and they didn't have a click on set, and I can't remember if they didn't have one or don't use one. I don't, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know what the what the deal was, but yeah, we didn't yeah. have one that day, and it was one of those where they were like, "We're gonna be on time," and I was like, "If you say so, like, mm -hmm. I'll, I'm gonna adjust anyway." So like, yeah, do yeah, your for best. Sure. And they're like, no, our drummer's a machine. And I was like, yeah. all right. Like, I feel like everyone loves to say that. Yeah. It was one of the few times where I got all the tracks in and I was like, yeah, he was like a machine. Right. The yeah. only thing that was longer was like the pause and the breakdown, which makes perfect sense that yeah. you add an extra beat in yeah, that live. But then it was like literally just like move the whole second half of the song. Like, like a little bit. It was unbelievable. I was so shocked. Yeah. Normally when I hear no click, it's like. All Dude. right, this is gonna be a, right. this is gonna be one. <laughs> let's let's try uh, it. Let's yeah, try let's it out. see what we can do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that's a it's such a weird one to me because it's such a. Uh, I think when I think of music, I think of singing, and the guitar yeah. then becomes singing, like it funnels For that sure. same thing. Yeah. And drums totally don't fit into that at all. Yeah. So the idea of being a good drummer is just so like it doesn't make sense to me. I don't mm. understand it. It's the yeah the one piece that is so foreign to me. Yeah, man. Uh, and yeah, the idea of being like clockwork and timing like that is just it was. I, I don't know. I'm glad you could do it. I'm glad yeah, people man. could do it, and it's like, cool as hell. We sent we sent him like the demos. Yeah. And like they had fake drums on it, mm -hmm. and he was like, huh. Can I add my own flair to him? Yeah. And we're like, yeah. Not <laughs> yeah, like too much, but like, yeah, sure. Like, don't, yeah. don't like deviate from it too much. Mm -hmm. And like, there would be like a part that's like, doom, doom, ba, doom, ba, doom, doom, ba, doom, ba. And he's like, and we're just like, ah, what? And it's all on time and it's fucking, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, very grateful to have him like come in and do that because we didn't, want to use fake drums yeah there was a point where we we're just gonna yeah because we've been sitting on it for like a year mm -hmm. and it's just so long it's like too much time yeah. and like i just want it out of course god yeah. i want it out so bad a week away <laughs> yeah so we're, oh my god dude we're like 10 days away right now yes sir. like today that's absurd this will be out like tomorrow or the next day so okay yeah, within a week perfect yeah, yeah i'm fucking terrified <laughs> yeah. i was scared man Hell this yeah, is dude. it's weird but um that's the instrumental yeah. portion of it. And then obviously there's the top lining stuff. Was that mostly mm. you writing lyrics? Yeah. So lyrics were initially just me. And then Jay is like a young prodigy. Uh, awesome. Like, the kid is insane. Hell yeah. Um, so if there was ever a point where I was like, hey, man, I I'm slumped. Mm -hmm. He'd be like, give me 15. <laughs> and then he would just have like a whole lyric sheet and just be like, here's this. And then he would like. Record him going like wah wah wah, mm -hmm. like like whisper screaming on yeah. a song, and be like, maybe lay it out like this. That would be cool. And I was like, all right, and I did it. It's just like, mm -hmm. like this is a hit, you know. 
That kid is a prodigy for sure. I got a buddy who does that as well. He's a top line guy, Josh Landry. Shout out. I don't think he mm. watched this, but uh, it's another one of those weird skills that I never thought existed in music. Like, yeah. whoever think as a as a five year old who's like, music's cool. I never thought there's someone <laughs> out there who only tops line, who's good at finding the vocal melodies and yeah, you know, dude. all the words. And yeah, it's such it's, a weird and unique skill set that it is, is weird. everything. Yeah, uh, man. Like, before this band, I was always like, I think I could sing. Yeah, I think I could do it, <laughs> and then you go to try it, and you're like, "Oh fuck!" Mm-hmm. Like I'll, I'll tell you right now, I st- I'm not even being like self deprecating, like I hate myself type shit, but like I don't think I could do it. Mm-hmm. Like I still don't feel like completely comfortable mm-hmm. with myself in singing and stuff. But just getting in and trying it was such a huge hurdle. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, fuck it. Let's do it. I think that's such an important thing to you say know. of like, yeah, I don't always feel comfortable sitting in this chair. I don't always know what the conversation yeah. is going to be, but there is something to be said of just, uh, I've been obsessed with the idea, uh, the man in the arena. It's a quote from, I think, Teddy Roosevelt. Okay. Uh, it's just the idea of like, you can't be in the arena and not lose. You can't be in the arena and not fail, but at mm. least you're in the arena finding out what could happen. As exactly. Opposed to everyone else is in the stands not figuring it out. Yeah, man. Um, and so I think, yeah, what you're saying is beautiful. Like there is you have a record coming out and you're still not quite sold about oh, it. It's like, that's a lot of record. That's a lot of people. That's bro, a lot of holy. Uh, people at work and whatever job, like whether it's a yeah. record or something totally separate than a record. It's like, yeah, it's a really common thing. I think the more we can admit, it's like, yeah, we're all kind of doing our best and Dude, jump into deep water, but just giving it a shot, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, just taking your shot. Like, yeah, man, like there's, there's certain lines on the record that like, I was listening to it in the car mm-hmm. on the way here because I was like, if he asks about that, what do I say? <laughs> you know? Because also, yeah, like, I'm good with talking with people, mm-hmm. but, like, even, like, just, like, being, like, all right, yeah, bring bring me bring me to your basement, man. Yep. Like, let's do it. And I'm, yeah. like, okay, what do I say? What do I of say? Of course, yeah. You know, yeah. everybody gets freaked out in Absolutely. those kinds of ways. And, yeah. like, you know, I listen to the record, and I'm, like, God, I fucking hate how I sang that. Mm-hmm. And there'll be ones that it's, like, you could have changed it. And they're all, yeah. like, you could have changed it if you wanted to. And I'm, like, yeah, but I'm lazy. I'm yeah. going to just leave it. Let people hate it. I don't care. You know. Also, how many changes can you make? At a certain point, it just is what it you is. You just gotta like, leave it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And that same thing that I learned with like trying to like attempt to mix for the mm-hmm. first time ever and like master and shit. It's like, don't make it sound fake. Yeah. Like, don't do too much. Yeah. Just let it rock a little bit. It does know? feel really raw and organic, and I like that. Mm. Yeah. There's a a realness to it that I think is relatable and accessible and interesting mm-hmm. in a way to me. Yeah. Uh, how is it transitioning to the vocal world? So I know you've, or to my knowledge, you've mostly done vocal or bass and I don't know if you play guitar. Actually, I mostly know as your bassist. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, mostly a bassist. And now you are holding the microphone, writing the lyrics, singing them, and you've got a show coming up where you're going to be uh, yeah, in the spotlight doing all God. that. <laughs> yeah. I'm fucking nervous, man. Hell yeah, man. I'm sure it is a nerve wracking transition. Um, yeah. Talk me through that. It's weird. It's fucking Weird and terrifying. I, um, it's funny. My mom, love my mom to death. Mm-hmm. She, uh, my whole life, she was like, you need to sing in a band. Mm-hmm. And I was like, meh. And she's like, nah, like, she's like, I gave you a weird name on purpose. <laughs> like, cause I know you're going to be famous. And I'm like, no, stop <laughs> it. You know? And, um, That's so funny. Just, dude, and she's like, you need to front a band. My uh, I, my parents come up on this episode, every episode, and they mm-hmm. always are like, oh, I love, it's funny. Uh, me and my mom were talking about this the other day, and I was saying that Zadek was coming over, and he's Hispanic. And as I said, I was like, I don't know how Zadek and Hispanic lines up. I don't know what your yeah. Hispanic background are. Um, but my mom is from South America as well, so okay. it's like a relatable, like, here. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I don't know where Zeta comes from. So it's funny that you bring yeah. that up. Is like mom intentionally was like, yeah, this is unique. Yeah. Let's make you unique and special. Yeah. So I'm Nicaraguan. Hell yeah, okay. Um, so I'm Chilean for what really? it's worth. Half, yeah. Wow. Uh, so yeah, my mom, uh, she moved here when she was like 20-ish in okay. the middle of her life. So yeah. yeah. So I'm so, technically first generation, which I like to brag about. Yeah. It's, me too. I'm not first generation at all, but like <laughs> technically on some piece of paper. Yeah, absolutely. Be. If you um, find it way, way yeah, back. Yeah. Yeah. So Valor, my dad was in uh born in Bluefields. Okay. So he was there for a while. I don't know when he moved here, but okay. it was very early. I think. I don't know. He just told me all these psychotic anyway, stories. Growing up, yeah, about, mom said you're gonna be a vocalist. Yeah, so yeah. You ready and, to go. yeah, man. Um so my mom was like, This is this is it. Like you gotta do it. Um yeah, and like I, I, I grew up playing instruments. I like started playing drums. That was cool. Um, I watched like the Disaster Pieces DVD, the Slipknot DVD, mm-hmm. and it was like, I need to play guitar now. Mm-hmm. There's like a Cold Chamber video of him like 
taking his guitar and like <laughs> across mm-hmm. like the monitor. And yeah. I was like, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Broke like a guitar over like a cement. I can imagine immediately Dude, shattering your guitar. Straight yeah. up. I um <laughs> I took my guitar and I grinded it across like a cement block outside. Course, yeah. And my mom was like, What the fuck are you doing? And it was just it was done. It was Make done it look cool, me. mom. Yeah, like I could do this. <laughs> yeah. Like look at go look at the TV, you know? Um, this is what they all do. That's how you do yeah, it. Yeah, that's like how you make cool noise and yeah, stuff, I think. No pedals or anything yeah, no, at all. No, no, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, but now doing being the vocal guy is very weird. Mm-hmm. Um, I always do like guest spots for bands and yeah. like – like, always had the vocal charisma, but yeah, you've yeah. Never had the vocal. If like a homie's band was there, like I'd grab a mic and talk mm-hmm. shit a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, and like that's like what I do. Yeah, but being that part of a band is weird, mm-hmm. and it's 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 not uncozy, but it's like eyes on me a little bit now, mm-hmm. and kind of like having to control a crowd a little bit more and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I was equated I, to like a quarterback in a band or in sports. Yeah, like, yeah, weird, yeah, like the entire team is on your back. Yeah. You know, and like, you know, I have to sort of put all of me out there a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that was a struggle that I was trying to kind of fix early on was like, I know that I'm going to have to write lyrics, um, which yeah. is cool. I've always wrote like in a journal, mm-hmm. um, but I never, I, I used to write kind of like lyrically because I was going to do like a band a long time ago that was mm-hmm. kind of like, just like emo sad shit yeah. you know i've always wanted to do it i never did it um so then i i took lyrics that i wrote from like way back in like 2015 2016 mm-hmm. That's cool. just okay. like being on a tour and being like man this is rough yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. write something cool yeah um just to get it out of my head yeah um so a lot of me is yeah now here mm-hmm. and it's cool but it's you know it's definitely like it's therapeutic, yeah, for sure, yeah. and that's what I kind of keep in mind is like I can write about things that maybe don't even necessarily pertain to me mm-hmm. but could pertain to someone, yeah. and it's gonna be for someone, and they will be able to kind of relate to it, yeah, and like have it for themselves, yeah you know? it is a really emotional and raw record, I think there's a lot of there's enough ambiguity in there where I could write in my own experiences mm-hmm. into it, but it is yeah. I hear what you're saying where it's vulnerable and raw and a uh, yeah. scary thing to put out in the world and be like, yeah, this is a little bit more of me than I'm used yeah. to sharing. Um, yeah, man. But yeah, and of course you read the lines perhaps differently than we do. So mm. if you're saying this much, it feels like you're saying this much when yeah. we're only consuming you know, what's on the paper. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's that like, oh, what if they read into this or understand? And it's like, yeah, no, they we're get not it, going dude, to. That's, that's, <laughs> no one will probably. Yeah. We'll get it in our own way. We'll think yeah. we got it and it'll mean yeah, yeah. something different. But And if somebody gets it in any way that they get it, yeah. it's fucking amazing to yeah. me you know that something that i just wrote in a book like mm-hmm. years ago mm-hmm. is now something mm-hmm. you know that's important to me i want to talk about the uh, artwork as well obviously you have like graphic design background but i love the little the guy falling from the logo <laughs> i think it's such yeah. a clever and small and like it's an iconic thing and it struck me when i first saw it as like that's a hard thing to draw so like recognizably and mm-hmm. make it so clear and digestible and also simple. Yeah. Like, was that a struggle? Were there 10 versions of a person falling before you got <laughs> to like one that felt, no. felt right? It was just the one. Yeah. Yeah. It just came very naturally. I, I knew that I wanted to doodle a bunch of little dudes running mm-hmm. around Yeah, in, I know some, that made in some out. sort of way. Yep. Um, but the one that falls from the logo, mm-hmm. he, uh, I don't know. I don't know where it came from. Um, I know. So when we first made the logo, it was like that which feeds on life was under it. Mm-hmm. And then there was just like an orange line that mm-hmm. went like through the Y. And I was like, that's pretty boring. Kind of looks like shit. Like, what can I do? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I kind of thought of like the meaning of the record and like what it meant to me. And I was like, drawing weird little doodles would mm-hmm. be pretty cool and like kind of like clash yeah. with this like homey loved it, yeah. film feeling um so i just drew a little dude falling from nothing into nothing mm-hmm. and that kind of just became like the icon for the band yeah, which think- which thank god we have one because <laughs> holy shit i wouldn't be able to think of anything else uh, yeah so i'm glad that he could be 
put. That was the other thought I had is like it's so hard to make a logo these days of like we've just I feel like we've seen them all and every logo we're making is just derived from something we knew ten years ago yes. and it's the font it's the style like it's just it's hard I don't I don't have a good logo I'm not saying that I've <laughs> solved this problem either but it is a common problem of like yeah how many Greek characters or whatever right. foreign symbols can you use Holy and shit, man. yeah how do you make something that is unique and identifiable and also like it says something like right. a, a, you can like I, said, I looked at that image and you immediately it's a guy falling mm -hmm. which struck me as the yeah the art level of like that's yeah, hard to make a, such a clear silhouette but also mm -hmm. uh yeah it's a profound thing that isn't complicated but right. it's immediately recognizable and digestible yeah. and that's yeah an incredibly hard thing to make happen in a one by one you know yeah, a tiny yeah, little yeah. graphic a little dude um Hell yeah. And then, of course, I love the doodles. I know it made onto the, I think, back cover. One of the covers of the... Uh, I think it, there's there's at least a doodle on... Or somewhere Everything. Inside. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying um, to fucking flood it with doodles. Yeah. <laughs> I like the, again, I took the same VHS chord of like, yeah, there's a kid thing there. And it's not that mm -hmm. you're... It's not a childish thing, but it's a youthful like, oh, yeah, you can just draw on this. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. I guess endearing huh. that supports the VHS to me in that way. That's, that's a cool way to... Um, think about it yeah see that's the thing <laughs> people will take it in their own way and yeah. that's so fucking cool yeah to me. yeah that rocks. Um, so i enjoyed that uh we got the we got the single out now uh whenever you oh, please yeah. has been out for a little bit and the album is in a, a week i know we're getting <sighs> nervous about that <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't but, look at me <laughs> <laughs> uh, the single it seemed well received on my end we're happy yeah. with how that all all it came together yeah i mean shit it did well for new band mm -hmm. You know, I didn't. I didn't go in really expecting much. It's tough, yeah. Um, so, like, putting it out, it was cool. You know, like a lot of a lot of new connections through mm -hmm. that one single, um, meeting new people, people who fuck with the song, fuck with the vision, mm -hmm. like understand it. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah, nine more. Uh, last question for the record that I have here. Okay. Uh, there's one piece where uh, I want to not give spoilers as I listen to the album. There's right, a couple right, right. like sentences that I'll happily tell you later, but I don't want to say right now that's okay. stuck in my head from samples or whatever. Yeah. Um, but one of them is that there's a really short song that then goes into the longest song on the record. <laughs> and when I was first looking through the track length, I was like, is this a misprint? Or it's like, I, I don't know. I thought maybe the <laughs> thing was in the wrong place. Yeah. And then as you listen to it, it's like, no, it is. That's what it's supposed to be. You're all going to um, skip it. I know you're going to. I, Don't do it. That You'll was my like first it. instinct. But I mean, I, then I was like, <laughs> no, he put this here for a reason. Yeah, what yeah. is the reason? How does this fit in? And as I listen to it more, it does, yeah, fit in with just the nostalgia VHS vintage. Like it's a, a vibe setter, an atmosphere setter, mm -hmm. a way to establish a, kind of the room that we're listening to the record. For in, sure. If that makes any sense. Yeah. But yeah, how did that come to be of a, a very short song <laughs> back to this to huge... Giant thing. Yeah, giant thing. Um, So... Jay had Tiny Song written, mm -hmm. like, in his, like, folders or files or mm -hmm. whatever from, like, years ago. And he was like, I like this riff. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. And we're like, sure. And then we kind of put it together, and it just stayed that little. It was mm -hmm. just a tiny little song. Yeah. And I was like, cool. It's like a little a little punch, a little boom, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that song's very cool, too. Um, that song, to me, is very personal mm -hmm. because, like... That song is called Alone in the Cul-de-Sac, the tiny song. The only reason I'm saying this is because I know that today I'm announcing the uh, track list. Oh, so yeah. So now okay. everybody will know. Cool. So okay. That's cool. Awesome. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, I was making sure I didn't yeah, spoil yeah, yeah, anything. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let you take care of yeah, it. Yeah, I'll, I'll fucking I'll ruin everything. <laughs> let it be me. <laughs> is that like today, today, or today in two days when this comes out? Today, actually, today. Okay. Cool. So okay. the... Just making sure. Yeah. Fifth is today? Whatever, yeah, whatever yeah. it is. Because yeah. the 15th is coming out, so like 10 days, here's the track list, boom. Um, Alone in a Cul-de-Sac, Tiny Song, um, which to me, I, I, I grew up on a cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. um, and it was fucking weird. And like, I, I God, I'm saying the word weird a lot. But like, it was just, everybody knew everybody. Mm. very neighborhood like like your normal like weirdo neighborhood bullshit mm -hmm. you always have like the one creep on the end of the street you have the one old guy yeah. you have someone who won't mow, stop mowing their lawn dude always <laughs> making yeah. fucking noise the one yeah. with like four dogs running around yeah. yeah like the like couple that will divorce because they're fighting every day and you just have to hear it sure. it was it was very uncozy and then you have like 
the three kids that you hung out with. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that yeah. was it. Yeah. And those were literally like your only fucking yeah, friends. That was your whole universe. Yes. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. God did it fucking suck. Sure, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and lived there the majority of my life. And that's essentially what the song's about. Mm-hmm. Um and it was very tiny. And I liked that it was tiny because like the street that I lived on was tiny. Mm-hmm. It was just a little street circle. Mm-hmm. That's it. And so the whole song is about that, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that goes into Giant Song, mm-hmm. which it's how an do I, to start? With. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, it, it is. It's massive. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not gonna spoil much about it, yeah. but I know people probably won't listen to it, which is fine to me. But my mindset with that song is, um, it it's meant to get in your head. Mm-hmm. Um. It's one is a huge fucking like again, like kind of like a fuck you to the norm kind of thing to yeah. sound like edgy or whatever, but like it's like we like how it sounds. Yeah. So here it is. And if you listen to a minute of it, word, but you're gonna miss something at the three minute mark mm-hmm. that those people who are a little more patient listen to. Yeah. And then the people who make it to seven minutes or nine minutes, I think, <laughs> or is it eight minutes long? I don't know. But people who <laughs> people who get further into it yeah. will kind of get more out of it, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And the people who like shit like that will like it. Yeah. The people who just like breakdowns probably won't like the record. <laughs> but you yeah. know, it, it, it's it's breakdowns on there though. Don't, don't want to sell myself short. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't want to sell myself short. There are some. There's mod parts. There definitely for, are. for the yeah. moshers. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Fuck it up. <laughs> Fuck it up. There's there's shit for you, and oh, there's yeah. also crying parts and yep. you know sing along parts. What but, made you put those two back? Yeah, yeah, short guy and big guy. Like, uh, I think big guy works as the back end of the record of like I felt mm-hmm. like I'd been through an experience and that was kind of a chance to like look inside myself before exactly. the experience finished up. Literally exactly um, that. Yeah. Um holy shit, yeah. <laughs> Hit it. Um so that song, what what is it called? It's a long name. It it takes it takes long to become familiar, but it takes even longer to forget. That's okay. the name of the song. The giant song? Yeah. Okay. The giant title for the giant <laughs> okay. song. It's um yeah, it's one of those where, like if you're listening to it in your car, you have to click it and it'll like <laughs> scroll through the whole thing. Yep, 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 yep. Um it's uh it's kind of meant to be like all this shit just happened. Yeah. Wow. That sucks. Here's me realizing that that sucks. Mm-hmm. Last song is the big ender, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So it's kind of, it's, it's placed there on purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, was there any like pushback from anyone else in the band or was everyone uh, no. of your same mindset? Um, I don't think anybody really questioned it. It was, um, this could be a little spoiler. Mm-hmm. It was first meant to be like a jungle song. Okay. Like a drum and bass song. Yep. Um, because me and Kalina, which is also kind of a little spoiler, want to make a project like that. Mm-hmm. Um, very just like what you would hear in like a club in Berlin, like underground, you know, like mm-hmm. that kind of shit. And um, we were going to make something that fit in that spot. But at that time, we thought that the record was going to come out a lot sooner. Yeah. So we we're like, uh oh. And, like, once we were making it, it just didn't feel natural for the record. It yeah. kind of just felt like it could be its own thing somewhere else. So um, I actually made, like, a chord that was going to go on that song. But then it just, like, went in my ears. And I was like, fuck yeah. Got it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Drag it nine minutes. <laughs> yep. This is it. Hell That's yeah. it. What uh, yeah. what was the last piece holding up the release of the record? I, I feel like it's usually artwork um, or something. There's some little one thing that has to get done or yeah. merch design that we're waiting on. It or... was just a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, um, so I worked at a agency mm-hmm. while we were trying to figure it out. Um, that was fucking my head a little bit. Mm-hmm. It, it's kind of hard for me to juggle a lot of things like that. Yeah. Which is funny because now I'm in like three bands. And <laughs> yeah, we haven't even gotten to also designing. Bands, yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that soon. Um, <laughs> shit, but like I'm doing a bunch of shit, label, mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff. So it's like, you know, it's funny that I say that. But with that being like, I think it's me having to be in a space that I can't. Like if I can't be home, mm-hmm. really just with everything that I need, I yeah. I kind of start to freak out. Mm-hmm. So. That was one of the things. I feel you. 
I had yeah. a similar thing of like I tour was fun to me, um, but it was like unsustainable in the sense of like you just come home and it's like oh fuck yeah and it's like you'd have to stay on the road or stay home for me yeah of and course. it's like I felt like I had to pick one or the other and mm-hmm. home was the for me a much more suitable option for the way I'm wired and it's like I still love travel I'm still yeah, excited man. to go yeah spend a week here and a week there and two mm-hmm. weeks there but like the idea of yeah spending eight months of the year. Yeah, not here was like ah, that's not for me. That's just not how I'm wired. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, everybody has a a tiny breaking point. Yeah, where it's like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, you know. Um, I mean, shit. I had that little moment too, where I was mm-hmm. like, maybe I should just chill for a sec mm-hmm. and kind of try to figure it out. Yeah, and I and I hated it. <laughs> yeah, and now I'm making music again. Yeah, like it. it and it didn't. It didn't happen slowly. Course, it was literally yeah. like in an instant where I was like, yeah, meh. Yeah, yeah, music is me. This is my thing. Yeah, you know, um, quite literally in your blood and yes, just, yeah, everything yes, that like literally from. since I was a yeah. kid. There's literally yeah. no way like anything could take this from me. Yeah, you know, like I have to do it. Yeah, um, shit. Where were we? I forgot what I was talking about. It was probably something cool and interesting. Probably we something talking really about sick. It, so it's probably sick as hell. Dude. It was probably fucking awesome. <laughs> dude, and now it was it's, so sick. It's running over there, too, again, with your other thought. No, <laughs> but you got, found your idea. thought. I did Fuck. find my thought. Yeah, dude, your idea is alone as hell. I'm beat. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> well, man, we are coming up on an hour, which I've actually never gotten to, so I'm very proud of that. Nice. Um, but before we get out of here, yeah, I wanted to chat Let's touch on stuff. the other quick bands and the... Label. I don't know what sure. label zine, what it was. So I know we got two other bands. It's a bunch of stuff. Uh, two other bands. We got a new metal band. We got a metalcore band. Yeah. You started three bands at once. Am I understanding that correctly? They kind of just naturally <laughs> happen okay. over time. Yeah. And are you uh, involved in like the writing? Like you are actively involved in all three of them, or is mm-hmm. one of them something you're just kind of helping fill in on? So um, Paper Cut was all Jay mm-hmm. a while ago. And everyone was like, hey, man, you should put that out. And he's like, nah. And I'm like, nah, you you should. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, sure. And it did really well. Hell yeah, okay. Uh, then we got members. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's me, him, Sean, Nyland, uh, shit, Brandon, T. Robs, Vaughn, who is also in mm-hmm. Centralia. Same with Brandon. So we all have a paper cut. And then there's also Balmora, which is like metalcore, prayer for cleansing, it's like slaying a dragon type oh, yeah. music with breakdown, so it's cool. And I believe all three of them are playing a show together at the end of the month, uh-huh. which sounds like with love. It's one of the worst ideas you could have possibly Holy had. Holy fucking it shit! Like, it is like all the fun, all the homies, like oh, so many great things. But also, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, three sets in a row. That's yeah. gonna suck. Yeah. Brandon actually, I think, is playing four sets that day. Oh God. And Jay is also playing four sets that we're all playing multiple sets. That's unbel- like, it, That's so cool that there's just like there's ten people playing five sets and they're just yeah. all rotating. It and out like, and like we're we're never gonna leave like the little stage area. Yeah, like it's sick. just gonna be us going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I have to. What do I do? I go bass, vocals, bass. So that's kind of like easy for me, you know. Brandon's just drumming the entire night probably, and. Yeah, it's it's all over the place. That's nuts. But it's a very anticipated show. Absolutely. Which yeah. is wild. Yeah. Because Afira literally just started. Mm-hmm. And we just like put out like a homie's like MySpace Deathcore record. Mm-hmm. And people were like, wait, this is fucking cool. And we're like, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then it just kept going and going and going and going. That's cool. Um, yeah, it just naturally happened. That's cool. Do both of them show. have music out on like Spotify where we can all find them? Oh, God. So. Balmora, we put out a split with Rizel, okay, which is Vaughn's other band, mm-hmm. and Jay's also in Rizel. Holy shit! So yeah, we have like nineteen bands, and um, we put out a split with Rizel, and you put it out through this distro called CD Baby mm-hmm. because they do splits, but Distro Kid, which is the one that like everybody uses, okay, doesn't yeah, yeah. do splits, okay. Um, but then when we sent the album art in, they were like. They wouldn't accept it, and they're like, "This is because it says like Rizel on mm-hmm. the top left, and then Balmora on the bottom right." And they were like, "No, this isn't a split between these two bands. This is Rizel by Balmora." And gotcha. we're like, "No, this yeah. is a split. These are the two bands." They're like, "No, this is Balmora, mm-hmm. and the record is called Rizel." And yeah. we're like, "Bro, 
Yep. No, it's not. Yeah. And then it just blew up. Like yep. nothing was working. Yeah. So now Balmora is, I think, only on Bandcamp. Okay. Um, and then the Brazil record ended up coming out. Hell yeah. So that's out. Um, Balmora, I think, is just on Spotify. And we're, I mean, on Bandcamp. Sorry. Uh, yep. And we're slowly but surely trying to get everything back to normal. Awesome. But, and the yeah. trailer record will be available everywhere. That oh, one yeah. will be out on I, all, I actually, all platforms. Funny enough, I put that up on DigitalKid, mm-hmm. like to release or whatever, two days ago. And I got a little notice that was like, you're cutting it close. So ho- hopefully it's out on the 15th. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> That'd be fucking cool. It would suck real bad if it wasn't. <laughs> oh, well. 15th, 16th, 17th. Yeah, somewhere somewhere you know, that weekend. As long as you check it out at least like one time. Yeah. I don't care, it'll, be, it'll be out forever. So yeah, <laughs> no, no rush to get it out. Yeah. yeah. Like three months from now or something. But oh, Hell yeah, man. Yeah. I feel, I feel like we're in a good place here. Uh, so we got... Yeah, what's coming up? We got the record coming up. Anything mm-hmm. else coming up that people should look out for, be aware of? Hmm. Um, a lot of cool bands actually doing a fear of stuff. Yes. Coming up. I f- forgot. We got the label stuff as well. Yeah. yeah. So all the bands. Yeah. Fuck it. Come more couple more minutes. Yeah. What are we doing with the label? Yeah, let's do it. So you um, got a label that you started? Yeah. Hell yeah. So it, it's um it started with Senti and mm-hmm. Vaughn. Senti is the vocalist of Belmara. Okay. And they kind of were just like well, Santi was like, hey, this sounds cool. I want to make a label. Vaughn was like, sure, let's do it. And then all of us talk every day, like on Discord and stuff. So like five of us were like, yeah, let's do it. Why not? Mm-hmm. Um, I do like the design stuff. Yeah, I love it. That's Fredo from Adrian does some of the design stuff as well. Okay. He uh, does a lot of like the, if you ever see anything on there that's like collage mm-hmm. looking and like pieces of paper cut up and like mm-hmm. scanned and shit that's all him okay very good at it it's it cool, looks yeah. it looks amazing the the aesthetic of it and i hate that word so much it's such a <laughs> dude uh, my two least favorite words aesthetic and vibe but yeah. i use both of them <laughs> because it just, so, it just works such pretentious words i don't even know what pretentious means fully but i feel like that <laughs> describes it <laughs> it makes a little bit of sense i think yeah um but it's such yeah whatever I hate that word but mm. I do love the the visual appeal of what you've curated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I it's, thought it was an interesting yeah to bring a graphic designer in as a, a label head is like oh yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah. to curate this and it's very yeah cool. present it to people so that's cool it's, and it's mostly it's a very like old style mm-hmm. looking thing it's like old school mm-hmm. it's cool I it's like very it. like hardcore centered mm-hmm. awesome mostly but like I think the thing with Afira is like we just don't care. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the best part of it. Yeah. Is like the first thing we ever put out was a bedroom EP mm-hmm. that was like our homie you you I think you might know Andy Reynolds. Um played in like Repress and like all these bands coming I'm up. I'm say I know him in case I don't know him. Or in case I do and I'm forgetting. <laughs> I I'm think, not sure. I think you might if you I saw might, him, yeah. like, oh fuck. I'm so him. bad with names, so yeah, I might probably recognize yeah. him, but yeah. So they just made like a death court record. Hell yeah. Because they love like old, like despised icon mm-hmm. and like all that, like crazy shit. Just made it randomly. It was like, want to put it out? And we did it mm-hmm. just for the fuck of it. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing was like a pop punk solo project. Okay. And then the next thing was like, it's just a bunch of random shit. I assume it's all homies and friends yeah. of friends and like. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's, it's growing mm-hmm. and it's very cool. That's and cool. Now we're able to like get merch. That's awesome. Done and physicals and things like that and this all happened in the span of like less than half a year hell yeah so that's exciting yeah it's very very cool where is that gonna keep growing into where are we six months from now a year from now we still is the label still taking on more bands or you kind of yeah. feel like you're happy with the circle you got yeah where is I, it I, I like that it's consistently growing mm-hmm. um it's it's not like label contract you yeah. need to do two records with us it, yeah. it's like afira is just like a little collective kind of thing that's yep. like you want to do some shirts? Let's run it. You mm-hmm. want to do physicals? Let's run it. You awesome. want to put the record out like through us? I think cassettes as Let's well. Do it. I saw yeah. in there also. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's very it's very neat. Mm-hmm. It's it's just homie shit, and cool. you know, yeah. like it feels good to like bring your homies up with you. Definitely. You know. Yeah. And like, say like one record does really well compared to another one, all your homies are coming up with uh, you. Yeah. That's and the key that's key, yeah. that's like the core. Yeah. You know, and like a lot of our friends are on it. We're getting a lot of people that. We don't know, mm-hmm. like putting in the records. That's like, exciting. Is yeah, it's it cool. Most is it mostly Connecticut based, or is it already it's everywhere already? Connecticut. Hell yeah. yeah, 
Um, it's very, very cool. Hell yeah. Got a lot of UK stuff going on. Hell yeah. Um, some Texas stuff. Cool. Like, it's a lot of cool shit. Hell it's yeah. It's kind of growing, which is surprising. That's exciting, yeah. It's not surprising. It's just, like, weird. It, it, it's cool we all we all do work. these things. Yeah, put them in the world, and then we're surprised when they get consumed in the yeah, world. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's I feel like, like wait, you actually fuck with this? That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. that's neat. You know? Yeah, but we get so used to no one giving a fuck, and someone cares, and it's yeah. like, oh wait, hang on, wait, that's kind of <laughs> what cool. do I do with this? No yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, hell yeah, my man. Well, I appreciate you coming through today. I yeah, appreciate man. you making time to chat about all all the goodies we got going on. Oh, I feel like all, we the, all the scary got through about half happen. of it. <laughs> 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 so we'll get a part two at some point. Get through mm-hmm. the back half and yeah, yeah I, I could literally at that point. I could fucking I could talk to I could talk for like four hours. Hell yeah, so. dude. That's the same. One, that's, one day we'll, <laughs> that's why I made this. Yeah. So I have an excuse to talk for four hours. We'll, we'll do it again. So where is hell there yeah, a time dude. thingy up there? Uh, yeah, hour seven. Hour and seven. It's like oh my. Maybe an hour five. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Chatted for a couple minutes before. Um, but yeah, where do people find you on social media? What can they look out for? I know we've been chatting about what people can look out for for mm-hmm. an hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if anyone somehow didn't hear that part. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> oh, shit. My socials are... Yeah. Uh-oh. I think Twitter is just at Zadak Brooks. I think Instagram is Zadak Brooks with an X at the end. Hell yeah. Because for some reason, the other one's taken. Asshole. Like without the X. That's what kill. <laughs> so, who, who the fuck is it? It's me somewhere <laughs> in an alternate universe. Um... <laughs> Fucking Centralia CT on everything. Don't add me on Facebook. That's weird. Thank you. Um, fucking shout out. Papercut, yeah, Papercut um, is forward slash Papercut on everything. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so like written out. Balmora now has a social. It's Instagram and it's Balmora.ct. I think it's in my bio. I there's Perfect. so much shit to think about. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, but you're doing better than I would. I don't even know my <laughs> own, and I got one. So. Yeah, I have like nine. I'm like, Ugh, uh. <laughs> um, shout out Seventh Circle, um, shout out Days, shout out Streets of Hate, um, shout out my friends. <laughs> I love y'all. Um, yeah, man. Perfect. And dude. my mom, you rock. Shout out. Shout out mom. Shout out mom. Mom fucking rocks. Mom rocks. Dude, we Dab get me up, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Count it. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> That's a good place.